Hi everybody, welcome to the channel for new battle report. So this is the second practice game I played at our Switzerland ETC bootcamp. Um, I faced Coco, who is one of our best player. He was playing his Orc and Goblins with a list very similar to the one that he brought at ETC or maybe even the same, I don't remember if he made some changes in between. Uh, here you have my list and this is my opponent's list. So he was playing an Adept Chamanist, my Master Tomatogy with a Binding Scroll. Then the Goblin King on the Gargantula with MR2, 28 8 Basher, 8 Goblin Rider, 2 two times 15 Iron Orc with Musician, 2 Bow Chariot, 2 Git Launchers, a Great Green Idol BSB and a Giant with a Giant Club. We played Breakthrough, uh, we just randomized it, so break, Breakthrough, Frontline Clash, Spell Selection, I had a bit of a debate between End of Heaven and Trial Face, I decided to go with Trial Face. Uh, just to have an additional threat to the Great Green Idol in case you want to come within mercenary range then I would have both trial face and mercenary shooting which makes his chance of surviving uh, lower so that was the idea but I could have picked as well End of Heaven instead we'll see how that goes and here you have Koku spell selection I think um, yeah it, there is debate between taking here I think the number one Awakened Beast and then take Hereditary instead of Breast Weapon potentially. Uh, Matchup analysis, so yeah I expected my mercenaries to be targeted by his shooting, both uh, his kit launcher can do big damage on them and also then maybe send in some chariot to try to do impact it and uh, reduce them, could be uh, potentially a problem. Um, I would be willing to frenzy bait the Ed Basher, they have only leadership 8 so maybe I can divide, uh, yeah, use my um, darts to frenzy bait him and then charge him with tribes and mercenaries using Frost Mammoth Aura to try to strike before him. That could be a potential plan. Great Green Idol could try to block my Tusker so I need to be aware of that and just having my mercenaries near them should be enough to make sure it doesn't come too close to them. Secondary objective, so no map control needed, meaning we could both um, avoid the other if we wanted to, and that's something to keep in mind for this deployment. My matchup rating, I felt I have a bit less stuff that are easy to kill. Uh, my big points are in big units, which are hard to finish, and other than that, I have single model that move really well. So I felt I should be able to kill some of his uh, chaff and uh, bow chariot, for example, to take s a little bit more point than him, but I expected uh, mostly a s type of standoff and potentially avoidance. And deployment, um, so I won the roll for side, pick bottom, which was more interesting, I just gave him the impassable, we had a ruin here, a water train, a hill, and then a forest. And deployment stage was quite interesting because Coco uh, decided to play the drop game. He told me you can start to deploy, which I did. I started, I think my first couple of drops were some bruisers on the right, some bruisers on the left, dog in the middle, giant here in the middle, then a tribesman in the middle, a giant on the right and tribesman in the middle somehow. And he was able to continue to play that game by putting some uh, git launcher, chariot, chariot still quite far away from my merc shooting in case I drop here. He wanted to be out of my shooting so he really wanted me to start the game. And at some point I didn't have any uh, drops left, he also put the, ca the light cavalry down. So he still had in hand head bashers, uh, at least one unit of iron orc, the three single models, the discipline unit and I think another git launcher. And at this point I had only like frosty characters, tribesmen, mercenary tuskers. That's the point when I decided to drop to start this game. So I went with what you would usually do in this type of situation, which is a strong left flank. Basically to tell him, if you want to face me and play a, a bloody game, so to say, uh, where we have a lot of fights, uh, please come, but then I will be starting and I have most of my stuff in that place. And if you want to go the opposite, first of all, it's quite hard to do because of it's a small place and there is a, a ring in between. And then second of all, that would leave me time to go towards the right and I knew that I would get some free points. And he decided to go for that. He felt, and I think that's to, yeah, that was the right macro for him, he felt 
um, it could be hard for him to really face my unit so he just put his savage here then you have the two iron orc he put all three of his single model here on the right with discipline banner and two character in between uh, in between the yeah in the unit second unit of orcs and then you have the second uh, war machine here um yeah i think that was somehow expected i could have expected from him to have the two single model instead of the ed basher here for example try to divert me play with the hill and then could still back off and use that as a cover from the merc rats. could have been a, uh, a way to do it but decided to go st strong flank with them so i knew already that i would need to back off with these two units so my turn one yeah didn't expect then a lot of action in this game since we are so far away from each other so I marched forward with everything, I just went slightly off the hill, positioned them to cover the angles in case the light calf want to come over here, turned them around, marching away, uh, move also this guy away, but kept more than sin in sin six inches in between, just, just in case he destroys one or the other of this unit, I don't want to cause any panic check. Uh, I push hard also on the left with the frosty, I will definitely be looking forward to get those three points, so to say. Magic face, I did try a face on the chariot, this one, I did one wound to him, and then I cast chilling and he dispelled my wrath of god. He's turn one, so he moved the light cap in this position, which I didn't understand really, because I felt if I charge here with most of my stuff, he, then he cannot really flee, and then he just what he did is position a lot of stuff to counter this charge. But I had my tribes and dart in a good position to to get them, so I felt okay with that. And then he pushed forward with the rest, not much to say, chariot moved back. Uh, the head basher didn't move much. Uh, in the magic phase he did 7 hit strength 4 on the tasker, did 1 wound. And then with 3 dice against 5 he was able to get a wrath of god on the hill, which hurt. Um, I felt confident enough with all my dice to stop that. But uh, didn't manage to do it, and that's the worth uh, that I expected in this game. Basically, we both have Wrath of God, and this could be a deciding factor in this game. I turn two. Uh, from shooting, what can I tell you? Yeah, I did, I think, two wounds to my Tuskers because he killed a model. So I think with the, the two, I think he shot it on me and did two wounds totally. Yeah. So I charge with these three guys against um, the Goblin. They hit on 6s, wound on 5s, and managed to do 2 wounds with standard shoot, which was unexpected. Uh, but I got the charge, I wasn't far away, and he couldn't really flee, because with a roll of 9 or more, he would be out of the table. So, yeah, I felt happy with that. Uh, continued to march away with both my unit from the right flank, continued to maneuver around to form a solid battle line here in the middle of the table. Here you see the Wrath of God. So, yeah, I just moved slightly back uh, from the Wrath of God to maybe with a low roll he wouldn't be able to hit me. I continued to march to Death Star. I offered him a flank charge, basically telling him, you can charge me, maybe you can block me, but that's not sure. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, that was okay for me. I decided I had the choice to make between putting the Kagadai here to keep Leadership 9 on the Tusker, which he targeted a lot, or putting Kagadai on the left to avoid him charging me in the flank. I decided to keep him on the right to secure my uh, discipline check, and in case he would stick me to turn, that's not the end of the world. I marched forward with the Frosty, I wasn't afraid of him charging me with the Chariot, because I would be steadfast and rollable, and I should kill him in two rounds, and I positioned myself with the Bruisers to have a counter charge. So I should be fine, and I wanted to have a short charge in case he moves away. I would be able to still charge with the Frosty on his war machine and get and kill one, basically. Uh, move away with the dog from the Wrath of God, and that's it. In Magic Phase, I got Hereditary off on the close combat, which I was happy with. I got again a chilling all on this war machine, and then with shooting, I started to shoot at the head bashers, try to kill some of them. I killed three of them. Um, close combat, I did only two wounds, he did two wounds back, wounding me on 6 up, which was uh, surprising, but he still lost because of the charge and run out of the table and I just restrain and reform. So that was good operation, he hasn't chaff anymore and Wrath of God didn't come down. He's turn 2, so he charged my two remaining uh, Tristan with his Iron Orc decided not to flee because they would be in front of my Tuskers and then I would be really blocked and he could push more. So I like the fact that my Tuskers were able to zone him with his single model that would be afraid of a charge of these three guys. 
I push a lot, he declared the work to make sure he gets the charge, it was a charge on the 8th swift ride against my guys, which he made, and the rest could march a lot, no dangerous train for um, the Gargantula because she's strider, and the rest move forward, he started to move his head basher looking towards the right, so really wanted to avoid my unit, and he charged me in the flank with his chariot, tried to pin me down, which I think it's a sensible move, in the magic phase, um, he got Hand of Heaven, did another wound to my Tusker, so he's really targeting them. As you can see, I was able to hide from one um, War Machine, which is at least something. Uh, then he got another Wrath of God with four dice against five and put it on the heel as well. So pff, this is really a nightmare for me, this, this both magic phase that happened. Um, then he was able to get, I think, from shooting again from this War Machine, did another two wounds to me. So I have only two Tusker left. I think so and close combat he did everything but one wound meaning I was still alive could strike a bit but didn't do anything and then I, I was I fled and he catch me ended up here in front more or less and no wrath of God came down until now so yeah this is really uh, getting stressful in the middle because I have all my expensive unit around these two wrath of God my turn three so I charge uh, forgot to tell you close combat he went in, didn't do so much, I strike back and I kill him, uh, but one wound. He ended up fleeing because of my static res, fled here to, um, close to the board head, and then on my turn I charge with the frosty, push him out, uh, restrain, uh, redirect on a 9 rollable and went onto the war machine. So I was happy with that. Uh, my Tusker started, started to move back, as you can see I have yeah, uh, two and a half models so to say. Uh, pass my march check with these guys which I was happy with move away move away basically has charges on the 10 10 and the closer charge on the Tuskers but I felt didn't felt too nervous about that um, yeah I kept being away with my stuff started to move towards the breakthrough zone with uh, this unit and uh, continue to march away with both my my unit from the far right that are able to move towards the left and also, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I had a very interesting opportunities. After this combat here, I was able to um, get a charge on his flank on an 11, uh, which was huge for me because it could have been a huge game opening. Nothing was looking at me. So that would have been really the game here. I think I'm in his flank uh, would have been a huge win if I get that charge off, but I failed the 11. No downside to taking this risk, so I just failed charge forward. But I was very excited when I saw that because as you can see, it's like uh, yeah, in the flank, there is no way he could hold that. And nothing was looking at me, so that would have been huge to position my Death Star here in his flank. But didn't manage to do it. Uh, magic phase, trial phase, kill two iron orc, I got hereditary off on the Tuskers, um, I got a first wrath of god finally here in front of, in the middle of his unit, um, and then one of his wrath of god came down, kill four iron orc, couple of wounds on my Tuskers, couple of wounds on the tribesmen that didn't hit, that was the first one, didn't hit my Murkvats, which was nice, and then with shooting he did, what happened, shooting... Yeah, that's his turn, my turn three, shooting, oh, my shooting, sorry, I, I shoot at the Iron Orc and kill another three, so not much left, his turn three, he decided not to charge and march forward towards the bottom, facing my giant, pushes his Arachnarok to my flank, my Wrath of God is here, as you can see, I have two Tuskers remaining, um, so he decided to move his single model in a solid formation, these guys are facing the right, don't want any frenzy checks, move them forward to, to continue to do range damage at my Tuskers, these guys continue to march forward and that's it. Uh, in the magic phase, I binding scroll Wrath of God because already two, that was enough for, for this game for me. I got minus one resilience on my Tusker which is bad news but um, I had other stuff to dispel. And then he got Swarm of Insect on Tusker, I wasn't too afraid of that, but he did 3 wounds with Swarm of Insect, <laughs> which is crazy, considering the fact that I have a trip, arm save, and then the Wrath of God came down, finishes my Tuskers. Yeah, uh, this is painful, did a couple of wounds here and there, but uh, mostly finishes my Tuskers. Uh, my turn 4, I continue to move away, passes the March checks, 
move away, started to move to the side because I have no Tuskers left. I need to get the Merc Vets within the breakthrough zone, so I start to move sideways and just covering the fact that my Merc Vets are looking down. Basically, if he continues to push, I will be able to shoot him and get more points. Uh, other than that, yeah, the rest just march, move away, so that's more or less the end. And here you have my Wrath of God came down, killed a couple of these guys, but that was it. Didn't do much. Uh, in my magic phase, a binding scroll, Wrath of God as well. Trial phase killed three of the Iron Orc. I'm really looking forward to finish them. I uh, got chilling all off on the war machine, and then with my shooting, I finished the two Iron Orc to get more points, which is nice. His turn, so we decided to stay away. Basically, didn't want to risk anything against the Merc Vets, so he just stayed away and um, did End of Heaven, did two wounds to my giant, failed his Wrath of God. My turn 5, continue to move towards the breakthrough zone, pushes forward with the Frosty, try to get a charge on his war machine. Uh, Fail Wrath of God, that was it. He started to move away from me, and then his turn, he just continued to put his mage to uh, strike at my Frosty, the rest moved towards the bottom. Um, he has, yeah, he just moved them away, but he had one unity of Iron Orc, and these two that are going to go for the breakthrough. Um, he failed. What did he do? Fail Wrath of God. And that was it, more or less. Yeah, I did uh, five hit strengths. One on my Frosty did two wounds, I guess. Uh, nothing with End of Heaven. And then my six, I went into Breakthrough with all three. Moved back the Frosty to not risk dying. And he moved himself on his six into his Breakthrough Zone. So that was it. Ended up being a perfect 10 10. Got one Git Launcher, the Spiders, one Chariot, one Unit of Iron Orc, and he got the Tusker and the Trison. Yeah, I think um, deployment basically delayed and minimized what could happen, so it was expected to be a drawish game. I should have switched my Tribesfire and the Tuskers. If I show you this picture, if you look at that, basically because of the lake, we can expect the, the matchup that I didn't want was the these Headbashers against the Tuskers. And I think because of the lake, he wouldn't really put them so far away from the middle and on the flank, going through dangerous train, not being steadfast. So I really should have put Tusker here and the Death Star of Tristan here. They would be very good at closing and making sure he cannot push at me, uh, because I have so many wounds and the Kagadai within the unit. So I should have had the Death Star here and the more mobile Tuskers on the left, which in case he did what he did, could push more easily towards him and put even more pressure on his flank. With a bigger charge range and march rate. So I think that was a slow, slight regret that I had was to put the Tusker more on the strong flank and then the tribesmen more in the middle to, to close the map. Um, what else did I want to say? Yeah, early Wrath of God, he had two that did huge damage to my Tusker's combi combination with shooting. And I think on Coco's part, maybe he gave away his chaff too early for nothing more or less. I was able to charge it easily with a dart. And I think the trade-off wasn't so good for him because basically he lost his only chaff option uh, quite early in the games. That was all for this game. Not a lot of action, but still interesting mostly for the deployment stage. To see how he was able to minimize and make sure there is no com not much combat uh, between scary units. So I think this uh, made sense from his perspective and from mine, I showed you what I could have made a bit better to uh, maybe slow him more down or have more option to do something with the Tuskers and maybe get even more points. But that was quite interesting. Uh, thanks a lot for watching the Battle Report and talk to you soon.